Good evening and welcome to Tea Time. Welcome to Tea Time. It is Monday night. It's April 15th, tax day. I'm so glad you're joining me tonight. I'm going to, man, I'm not going to talk about my weekend. You know, I normally do. I'm going to talk about how I wasn't here last week. And I hope you all watch my repeat show with Al Martin. Uh, may he rest in peace. Wonderful, wonderful man who started out as a comic and the owner of the Broadway Comedy Club. Um, Instead, I'm going to talk about Florida, because that's where I went to go visit my parents. Um, but before we put up any pics, I just want to say Murdered by the Mob. There's Ralph Bracco and I, Bunny and Vito. And if you have nothing to do, go to MurderedByTheMob.com and just look up shows. Come see one. It's like going to an Italian wedding. Someone gets whacked. you got to figure it out. You eat, you sing, you dance, you drink. A lot of fun. All right, so let me get to Florida. Florida. I went to go see my parents. There's my mom. Look at mom. Jean Canastracy's going to be 86 years old next month on May 4th. And dad is 89. Now, he gets up every morning at 5.30 to walk. And mom rides her tricycle. <laughs> love it and that last that next pick leave that there please they're going to be married 67 years and they can't keep their hands off of each other <laughs> i love them so thank you so much for those picks um i had a blast seeing them i i needed a week in florida and what do you do in florida well we played bingo we went to karaoke we went shopping and of course we went out to dinner so I just had a blast with my parents, and uh, they'll probably be back sometime in June. Um, so that's that. Um, all right, I'm very excited because not it is only tax day, but I have a friend of mine here who I met a while ago. We've been trying to coordinate her coming on my show. She's an actor. She's a writer. She's a producer. She's a comedian. She's an author. This woman has done it all. Ellen Harris is here. Hi, Ellen. Hi, <laughs> Teresa. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm excited you're here. I, me too. You know, um, we met actually years ago. Um, before we did Dangerfields together, you did a um, show for John LaRocchia. Yes, I, I was just about to say that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, John yeah. LaRocchia, who does um, Laugh to Saves Lives, and it was for rescuing families. Yeah. That's where we actually first met, met, met. But yeah. the last show we actually did together was at Dangerfields right before the pandemic. Before, like, yeah. Like the like weekend, the Thursday like before, the, before. before the Monday. The, to, that the caca yep. hit the fan. Yep. And, uh, yes, it did. We had a great time that night doing mm -hmm. a show for Jeff Kreiner. Shout out to Jeff. And um, But I want everyone to get to know you because you've been in this business a long time. First of all, yes, with the gun is. Gala. Oh, very nice. I'm impressed. Yeah, so yes. I went to high school with Zoe. Oh, bravo. Michael yeah. Aples. Uh huh, yes. So, you know, I learned a little bit. Yes. I can't say the rest because most of it's bad and right. dirty, you know. Yeah. That's but what Greeks do. We, we, just, <laughs> we teach you, we don't teach you, like, you know, happiness and love. We, we, we go right to the curse words. <laughs> so, basically, you grew up in Manhattan? Yes. Your whole life? Yeah. And pretty much never yeah. left? Yeah. Pretty much. I'm on the island. I'm stuck on that island. Sort of like Gilligan's, except <laughs> a lot dirtier. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I went, in high school, I went uh, to school in the suburbs, but then I, you know, and then I went to college, and then I was like, okay, and then I just came back. I mean, I graduated, and the next month I had a, an accounting job. Yeah, you, 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 mm -hmm. um, you have a, um, uh, 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 accounting degree, you that, have a yeah. BS in accounting, you mm -hmm. have an MBA in finance. Mm -hmm. Hello, mm. very smart woman. Oh, yeah. I, I, <laughs> she, you know. She's good with numbers. I, yes, and it's just so ironic. <laughs> and I'm here tax on, day. on tax day. We so day. didn't plan this. I know, it's I know. Hysterical, totally, though, right? totally. I, mean, I just I mentioned it like right before we got <laughs> on air. So and I just want people to know because I, I still have a little accounting empathy in my heart. Um, don't don't think that you still have time to go to your accountant tonight to ask no, him no, to no, finish. No, no, no. But you need like, an extension. You'll, yeah, just, you just go on extension then. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, yeah. You know, don't, don't. I went on extension. Yeah, it's all right. I mean, it's that's what it's there for. <laughs> but anyway, I don't want to talk about that. Anyway, so when, lose you, the audience. when, when mm -hmm. you're in school, high yes. school, I mean, college, you kind of like had an idea of the direction you wanted to go. But when mm -hmm. you were in school, were you into the arts and the theater and performing? No, I didn't do any of that. You didn't? I, not, nothing. So I used to come home and watch soap operas. Me um, too. <laughs> but I loved TV. I watched a lot of TV from the time I was little. I, that, I was the babysitter, right? Now yeah, yeah, it yeah. would be like almost criminal to right, right, put right. your kid in front yeah, of you. Well, yeah. now it's videos, but yeah. uh, so, sort of, I guess, the same thing. So I loved sitcoms. I used to watch I Love Lucy with my great, great my great grandmother, yeah. and you know all the sitcoms, the rerun, the old sitcoms, the you know the newer ones, the you know that were on, and uh, so I really wanted to be on a sitcom. That was my dream. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, but I was there's nothing to do with like. You know, I didn't. I, I don't have a Hollywood family, or right, and, right, and nobody's right. in the arts in my right, family. Right, There's right. no. We have no talent on both <laughs> sides. Uh, nothing. <laughs> horrific. Nobody can sing. Nobody. The dancing is awful. <laughs> they're, they're really not to, good people. Yeah. Good cooks. Yeah. Other skill sets, but not 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 uh, uh, performing arts. So anyway. Went to college. I actually college. I knew I wanted to be an accountant. I wanted to go into business. I was I was obviously very good in math. Right. That was my strong suit. Right. And I'm st very good in actually advanced algebra. Nobody still to this day has asked me to um, <laughs> to, to calculate a quadratic equa a we, 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 equation yeah, yet. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, and then uh, <laughs> I went to work like right out of college. Got a job in a, a large accounting firm. I was an auditor for a long time. I did taxes. I did small business. I did large business. I really got a, quite the uh, foray. And then I was like, a lot of people that I knew were going to Wall Street, making much more money. I was working a bazillion hours. Right. And uh, so I went and got my MBA. And I, then I worked in an investment banking firm as a derivatives analyst. I know, again, I don't wow, want to lose Wow, that, that's hot. I don't want to lose anybody. <laughs> Um, so then I was going to take my CFA, which is the Chartered Financial Analyst exam. And I actually took the first part and I passed and I took the second part. I didn't really study for it. I didn't pass. And I, that was actually a great thing that happened because then I was like, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. I've gone through a lot of school. I'm totally proud of it. And to this day, I don't regret it. Obviously, right, right. nobody could take away my no, background, my no. degrees, my education. Right. Uh, but I, I had to do something fun. So just to get back to your question, um, because I grew up in New York City, I, I actually, it was really my aunt. My aunt, who's my godmother, who I'm very close with, loved the arts. She was also a teacher. Okay. So she didn't have any kids of her own, but we were like her kids. Right. And she took me to my first play at Lincoln Center when I was four years nice. old. So I would say I that's when I really like loved it and was just in awe of live performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and then over the years went to see Broadway shows and the ballet and you know and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I was always around it and from you know that from from that perspective. So fast forward, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to take an acting class. I've never taken an acting class. I took an improv class at the new school. I loved it. It was fun. We weren't talking about reports. We weren't talking about the balance sheet. It was just so freeing yeah, yeah. to just be my silly self. Yeah. And um, then I was like, okay. And then I took another class. And, it, and we started talking about this earlier. You know, yeah. I took a co commercials, film, soaps, this, that. And New York had just a plethora of classes that you can just go to for six weeks, eight weeks. If you like a teacher, you know, maybe six months, this. So I 
I uh, studied with a few teachers, but the one teacher that really changed my life, one of them, um, yeah. was a woman by the name of Penny Templeton. So now I'm um, three years into this. I'm mm -hmm. going to her class, mm -hmm. and she would have us improv something from our life at the time, that whatever was going on, just to, as a warm-up. Right. So I, I would come in every week, and one of my sisters was getting married, and it was always like a drama. And big, <laughs> I remember my sister going, oh, you're going on vacation. We have this wedding to plan. I go, I, we don't have a wedding to plan. Right. You, you have a wedding to plan. <laughs> I mean, I'm your maid of honor, but you have your wedding plan. Right, right. So anyway... I would go through all this, and Penny said to me, and I'll never forget this and change my life completely. She goes, I have two notes for you. One is you should write a play about your sister's wedding, Greek wedding. And I go, what? this is before the movie. Of and, and I go, who's going to want to see that? <laughs> no one's going to relate to that. Oh, my god. Because I have vision. Right. And the second thing she said is, I hope you talk about your Greek family in your stand-up. Okay. And I said, I don't do stand-up. And she said, and this is exactly what she said, get some. Wow. And I remember that night as if it was yesterday, and it wasn't. <laughs> I was in the cab. I'm going home. I'm sitting there, and I'm like, sit, come. I'm, I'm like, stand up. And I'm like, well, maybe if I become a stand up, I can get a sitcom because all of the stand ups, like Seinfeld, like yep. Roseanne, Back and Brett then. Butler, and blah, 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 Ellen, you know, whatever. Yeah, Tim, Ellen, Tim Allen, Tim, uh, they were all right, there. And they all got sitcoms. Yes, and they like, did. That's, a, that's great. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> that's how I'm going to get my sitcom. I thought the same thing. I, oh, did you? Is it, I know. Good thing we didn't know that that's not happening. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so then, and that was it. And then it just parlayed. So I. Went to the comic strip. Yep. I took a class with a guy by the name of D.F. Sweetler, who is still there and looks exactly the same. I don't wow. know what time machine he's got okay. at home. Okay. But yeah. and uh, I did a I did a class, and you know you do your first show, and I I I thought it was fun. I yeah. thought it was great, and then I liked it because. I'm a little bit of a control freak, and I felt like I had more control because these are my words. Right. Um, right. I mean, they are still my words, but of course, now that I'm over 20 years into it, you know, it's about entertaining the audience and, and writing material that people are going to relate to and all that other kind of stuff. But yeah. uh, anyway, so that's how the stand-up really started, but it was not my original intent. It wasn't even anything I, I It wasn't on your radar. About. No, not at all. Until she said yeah, something. Yeah, so... But going back, I had it inside me. You know, I was always very animated. I like to tell stories. I like to be the center of attention. In my, fa <laughs> in my family, though, not necessarily with strangers. Right, 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 right. You know? Yeah. And, you know, we're Greek, we're loud. So your, yeah. fir your very mm -hmm. first time you acted... Because, like you said, you took a lot of different yeah. classes. But the first, the first gig you ever landed was what? Oh, you're not going to believe this. It was uh, it, some independent film that yeah. I found at, in backstage. Okay. Right, so I started to get backstage and yeah. Uh, when it came I, I, in an actual I, paper back then. Right, right. I don't. I don't think I had. I don't know if I had a headshot at that point. I don't know what I. I can't even remember what I submitted. But anyway, and the film was called The Accountant. Really? Yes. Yes. Isn't that wild? Wow. Isn't that wild? It is. And uh, But I, it was me and about a zillion other people in like some church gym on 54th Street. You know, that was the first, 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 first thing wow. I had ever did. But I remembered, I felt so invigorated. And, and it was like, it was just, we were a crowd. We were dancing. Right, I, right, oh, we had right. to like, like rush, like to the middle. Yeah. I remember I was wearing sandals and I had gotten a really nice pedicure. Yeah. And somebody kicked my, to my toe and I chipped my pedicure and I was very... I was, I was like, and because I, because I was I completely yeah, convinced. my new I, pedicure. I, I was completely convinced that you know my sandals and my pretty feet were going to be in, know, the in the shot. In the yeah, shot, yeah, yeah. of course. And, uh, so I never saw its full form, but right. that was one of my first things that I that I remember that ever did. And then I did a lot of like the student films, and again the independents, and then. Uh, um, and then, and then later on, I stood in for Susan Lucci on All My Children. Oh, I could so see that. So very, very nice lady. Very nice. Oh, she's I a did doll. it twice, and uh, teeny, she's one of us, like teeny tiny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And she, um, and and I remember being there, and this was when AFTRA was separate from SAG. Correct. And Before the they merged, and they they made me join AFTRA, which was only. 
it was was a fee, right? right? And uh, that was it. It wasn't like SAG with the waivers and it's got to be a SAG film right, or whatever. Right, it was right. just because it was television. Yeah. Well, I remember I didn't want to do it. I was annoyed. As a matter of fact, the first time I was at all well, my children, I didn't join. And when they called me the second time, the guy said, "You have to join or else I can't hire you." So wow. I you know, sucked it up. I went down. I yeah. paid the you know, whatever eight hundred bucks, whatever it was at that time, mm -hmm. and and that was it. Thank God, because years later, when SAG and AFTRA merged, you automatically became I was SAG. grandfathered. I didn't have an initiation fee, uh, so it, that really worked out. But I was very annoyed. Right. <laughs> I belonged back back in 1982, three. I belonged to. Uh, National uh, Academy of uh, Arts and Sciences, uh -huh. um, and and uh, I I won. I don't know how this happened. I don't remember, but I won a day on the set of All My Children, and Susan Lucci was there that day, and they were blocking. Mm -hmm. So I got to see, you know, what they do because yeah. I didn't know it was my yeah. first time on set, and I'm thinking, oh, it's so tiny. Yeah, like they look so big, right on TV, and then yes. you get there, and they're like. Yeah. My new. Yeah, she's teeny tiny. But the, the first soap I worked on was Another World. Oh. And that was in Brooklyn. So that's what had happened. I worked on that one. Okay. Then when I did All My Children, the, the union guy was on the set. Right. I got away with that one, but then when it was the third time, they were like, no, that's you have it. to. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. no, I'm sorry. It was As the World Turns. As the World Turns. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. All right, well, listen, yeah. we have to take my first break. Don't go away. More with Ellen when we get back. We'll be back after these messages. Don't go away. All right. Is everybody having a good time tonight or what? That's what I thought. Hi there, Teresa. It's John York from General Hospital. I am just checking in because apparently you have a great talk show called Tea Time on Strong Island TV. I want you to have continued great success and have a lot of fun. It sounds like you're having a lot of fun, and that's pretty much the key to everything, isn't it? So continued success. I'm proud of you. Have a great day, Teresa. Bye. Hey everybody, welcome back to Tea Time. I gotta give some shout outs to Ann and Greg and Michael. John Messina's watching, John Santos watching, I'm sure Bruno's watching. Thank you everyone, please like the show, please share it. I'm on every Monday night, Facebook and YouTube, live. And then it goes to Roku TV, Amazon Fire TV, Twitch TV, everywhere podcasts can be heard and seen every Saturday at 10 a.m. on Channel 20 for people who live on Long Island and get Optimum. I'm so excited because my friend Ellen is here. She's an actor, writer, producer, um, and comedian. She's done acting. She's done stand-up. She's done it all. And we met uh, through stand-up um, and... Um, Wanted to talk to you about, we, we got into the acting thing and your first gig and how you became SAG because you were grandfathered in. A lot of people, like you said, you got to get waivers or sometimes you get a Taft-Hartley and it, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a whole, yeah, it's a whole, it's, pro, it's a whole mm -hmm. process. Um, but you've, uh, back in 2000, you did something early, called Early Edition. You played a doctor back then. Um, that was with Kyle Chandler. Uh, I did. Yeah, that's what it says on IMDb. I don't know. Um, I got I got some creds here oh, that oh, I, I wanted know. to go through. Um, you've that. played you've played Wait. in uh, the Greek Gods of Comedy, which actually you wrote. Oh yeah, that was you, a stand-up comedy. Yeah, special. that was a yeah. and yeah. you wrote yeah. and you executive produced that. Yes, yes, so yes. So tell me yes, how yes. that came to be. Um, so I'll, again, I'll just backtrack a second. So when I decided to 
jump into the <laughs> stand-up comedy pool uh, at the shallow end. Uh, uh, you know, doing stand-up for a little while, and I remember, and I'll, I'll, I'll say his name. His name is Eric Hansen. He was a manager. He actually runs Broadway Comedy Club. He does a lot of yes. different things. But at the time, yeah. I was taking a writing class. It was a bunch of us. And I remember him <laughs> saying to me, you know, he represented Modi, if you remember Modi, right? Modi, he's like, you know, Modi does a lot of, you know, temples and synagogues. He's like, yes, isn't yes. It, they're like a Greek community that you can, right, you know, right, perform at? Right, right. And I was like, well, yeah, I mean, there's a community, but I right, well, right, right. comedy, I don't know. And um, so, long story short, I got in <laughs> touch with a woman that I had met over the years. She was a PR person, blah, blah. And she got me into a, a couple things, and that really started my foray into uh, the Greek audience. Right. So, but in my stand-up, I talked about being obviously growing up Greek and my right, parents and right, all that other kind right. of stuff. So that was natural. But then, you know, as time went on and I was doing those shows, I made it much more specific for our people and right, right, and whatnot. Right. So that special was, I think, in two thousand and seven, and I did it with a couple of other guys, and we recorded it at Gotham Comedy Club. Yeah, I have two thousand eight, so, but yeah. somewhere oh, yeah, two thousand eight, yeah, yeah, somewhere yeah, around yeah. there. Mm -hmm. um, well, you grew up. I grew up in a very strict Italian household. Mm -hmm. You grew up in a very strict Greek oh, yes. household. Oh yes, household. Mm -hmm. were, you, were you the oldest? Yeah, mm -hmm. me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the oldest girl mm -hmm. does not make it any easier. I don't have any brothers, so it was all girls. Okay, yeah, but yeah, you yeah, were the yeah. icebreaker. Oh, totally for them. Oh yeah, no, no question about it. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but you did you you've done many different parts you again you've mm -hmm. done shorts you've done TV series you did something um, uh, you did you did finding which was a short we are New mm -hmm. York yeah you played the director that was a TV oh, series yes. that yeah that was fun yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, you did uh, to, to the to 2014 you did yellow brick uh, I think hell. It's a TV series. You did Living in Exile. You played Athena. Really? Oh yeah, that was uh, Jimmy right? Drinos. Now I know that. you yeah. do speak Greek, and yeah. and and you have in in your acting. Yes. You've yes. done some things because yes. I saw it in your reel. You were speaking Greek. Yes. yes. Do you feel comfortable yeah. doing that? Yeah. I mean, I I can't be like twenty five minutes of straight Greek. Uh, so my Greek's not bad. It's okay. good. I went to Greek school for eight years, but <laughs> you know. I took Spanish for seven years in school. You think I would be fluent, you know? Uh, my great grandmother, my grandmother spoke, and uh, now it's funny. My Greek actually got better, right? Because of doing Greek American comedy, and 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 also over the years, I, I've gotten very involved with the church. I'm a Sunday school teacher, right? Um, I've I'm, I've got a ton of Greek girlfriends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So m it's funny. My Greek is definitely much better. It's as best as it's ever been. <laughs> so I'd really love to be a little bit more structured and learn. I can. The reading came back to me. That was the one thing. Like I hadn't really read anything in a long, long time, right. and now I can. I can. I can read. Now I, I know in Italian mm -hmm. we have a lot of different dialects. Is mm -hmm. that the same with? Greeks? Uh, yeah, well, dialects? I'd say the biggest dialect difference is the Greeks in Greece and then the Cypriot Greeks. So my mother's side is from Cyprus. Okay. So that one, that's definitely a different, uh, a, a much, you can tell when someone's Cypriot. Yeah. Got it, got it. You also did The Closer. You played a waitress. Mm -hmm. uh, what Exit, uh, again, um, mm -hmm. Athena. So you played a woman named Athena twice. Yes. Um, <laughs> my first meetup was a short. Yes. I think you played Alina? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, um, it's, 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 Dan Bro, you played a teacher. Didn't have legs. Uh -huh. Um actually yes, played teacher. um Helen as a TV series um uh, Spiros Eros. Am I saying it right? Yeah, uh, that actually never came to fruition. Oh, it didn't? Yeah, okay, that didn't but come that, to was, that was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, no, that was, um, George to Zuvalos. Yes. You know George? Yes, yes. I worked with him yes. on once a, once, a, once a Week for Life. Uh-huh. Um, okay, and then you did A Thousand Miles. You played Tilly. Um, and that was oh, with right. Patina Sky, I yes, think. Yes, in, yes, in yes. In 2022. Yeah. You know, I haven't thought about any of these in like the long, you're like. <laughs> it's like you, you do them yes. and then you kind of like, you know, yeah. you put them away. Yeah. You're like, I, I get it. You yeah. know, it's kind of like your favorite doll and you put it on a shelf yeah. for a while and then you're like, I remember playing with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> something, something like that. Like, um, 
Yeah, I, I have. I've done a, a bunch of things, you know. But you've you've done you've done you've done you've you know you also have done The Irishman, The Punisher, mm -hmm. Billions, Blacklist, um, Sopranos, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, Sisters, and a, again a reoccurring role, which we have a pic of you and your reoccurring role as a waitress in The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Um, there, uh, there you are, mm -hmm. and uh, go go back to the other one. There you are. Hold that a second. There you are in your. Uh, Waitress, I love period pieces. Oh, that was you a know? period piece. Isn't it great? <laughs> and then the next one is you with uh, with yeah. them. How great and cool was that series? It really was. So I will uh, I'll tell you a, a backstory to it. So when I got called, I went to the fitting. So this was for season two. Mm -hmm. I wasn't in season one. Right. And I remember uh, in the in the dressing room, I put that little waitress <laughs> uniform on. Yeah. And I, the button right here was a little tight. I really? Mean, it was tiny. Wow. And I was like, and I remember one of the wardrobe people going, oh, this is a little tight on her. And then the other wardrobe person goes, well, then we can get, we'll get somebody else. And I go, <gasps> no, 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 what? I will not eat. I will not, oh whatever. My God. So they're like, all right. I mean, it, it buttoned, but it was a little tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I fit into it. I went, fit into it. Uh huh. And, um, and it, it was it was amazing. So I just worked in the deli. I never got out of the deli. Right. So I was on season two, three, four, and five. Same costume. Uh, the hair always wound up being different. Yeah. Uh, I will tell you the one not great thing was that period pieces women have to cut their hair. So yes. my hair is always yes. pretty much on the long side. Did you agree to that? I did agree to it. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, you have to agree to it. Well, I know and, a friend of mine who went and pinned her own hair up. And like, they let her do that? Yes. See, I don't know. I didn't really think I had an option. So I had, for four years, horrible haircuts. Really? Yeah. Because I, I don't like my hair up to right, here. Right, a certain length. And for three seasons, I had them do it, and the last haircut that I got from them was horrific. Really? Horri you think they know what they're doing? Hello? I mean, they just went and took shears, and she just started chopping away. So when they called me the left, for the last season, I said, I will do it, but... I'm going to my own person to cut my hair, which again, I didn't even know that that was an but option. Why can't, you have an option of a wig. Right. I don't right. understand I, that. No, I know, I know. Um, Maisel, Rachel obviously wore a wig. Right. Uh, so anyway, she didn't have to was, cut her hair. Right, and it was like blonde, like her hair yes. was not yes. what, what, what it is. Yeah. So, but to get to the po more positive stuff, uh, it really was. I mean, it was a sitcom. Yeah. That was a sitcom. Yeah. yeah. And um, and and it was fun. And it a great fun. one. It a was fun. One. Um, the woman, Amy Palladino, Amy Sherman Palladino, who wrote Gilmore Girls and yes. everything. She had been on on set and mm -hmm. stuff. She's a real bundle. You know, she's in the back, and she's, you know, you know, why, why is this? Why is that? I mean, she, but she knows what she's doing. Right. You know, right. She, she grew up in the business. I mean, amazing, amazing. Um, so it was great. It was, it was, it was the real deal. I was with real actors. Yeah. Uh, Rachel. Real set. And, real, yeah. real everything. And uh, Alex, uh, are, are incredible. I did. There was a lot of scenes. I was there with them, and yeah. it was so much fun. There Were you some... able to hang out with them at all during? No, break I mean, I had really? a little chit chat with all Rachel, right. yeah. but but you know, everybody's in their zone, and. I, I don't, you know, you don't really want to, unless you have, you don't want to bother them, unless yeah. you really have something to say, right. then there's nothing to say, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. So you just respect their space. Yeah. That was, that was a great, just a great series. From mm -hmm. there, from there, was there, um, uh, I know you also um, did political, uh, you were a political humorist, mm -hmm. uh, if that's what you, if you agree to mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And you were on yes. Hannity. Yes, um, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Like around three times. You yes. were also on Say Anything with Joy Behar. And you also did yep. The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. That was a sketch. Well, that was a sketch. That was a sketch yeah, you yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, that was a sketch. But that's still, hello. Yeah, that's yeah. a hello. Yeah. It's, it's... But that wasn't, like Hannity, I was like a yeah, real yeah, talking came head. On. I did Red Eye once. You're very funny. I actually watched whatever, <laughs> you know, you had up there, and I'm like, this is hysterical. <laughs> It's really good Thank because you. a lot of your comedy is observational comedy. Yes. Yes. And on and I know that you like any comic we talk about what we know, mm -hmm. our experiences, whether mm -hmm. it's family or I know you mentioned your husband, I do too. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, you know, yes. things that we pull from. Yes. Um but 
Is there a topic that you try to stay away from at all, considering we have this woke uh, society going on? Because I've talked about this before on the show. Uh, I am not raunchy. That's just not my humor. Right. I don't really want to hear it personally. Right. Uh, it's never really funny ever. Very rarely. Mm -hmm. So I don't. That I just don't do because I don't like from. it, and I always yeah, yeah, yeah. have. I will tell you something that actually D. F. Sweetler told me, and I I carry it with me to this day. I remember that first first comedy class. He said to me. I want you to write clean because you can always make clean dirty. You can't make dirty clean. It's true. And it stuck with me. And then he said, of course, and you can work more if you're yeah. your clean comic and, and all of a sudden you can be on TV and, and all this other kind of stuff. So uh, that was always my mindset. And uh, do I shy? I don't, I don't really shy away from anything. I mean, look, I'm not there to piss anybody off. No, we're there to make there people to laugh. Get you aggravated Absolutely. and and and, and yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't I'd say I I don't really have anything I shy away from. Yeah. If you're gonna do political humor, I mean, on those shows, yeah. you know, when you're on a Hannity, you're gonna talk politics, right? Right, right. Um, so, and I used to do the show on Fox Business called Bulls and Bears, okay. which was at four o'clock after the the bell at the, from the New York Stock Exchange, right. when, you know, when the market closed. Um, and but I, that was a little bit more with my business background. But I would, you know, I'd crack a joke here and there and stuff like that. But but it was really my business background that got, kind of got me on that. Um, so, but you know, if you're going to do politics, like. I think Lewis Black is a great example because he puts down both sides. I think there is a lot there. Oh yeah. But but if it's one sided, as far as I'm concerned, that it's not going to work. Right. Right. So it's a, it needs so, a balance. So, yeah. Um, I, I'm not going. I'm not talking about race. I'm. It's just they won't, wouldn't work well for me. Yeah, you know, yeah, not yeah. that I have a desire to do that. I'm just saying, right, like, right. so that's just something. Yeah. You know, I'm not into. Um, I li I like. I, I, I do do marriage material, whether you're married or whether you're a couple, you know, dating. Mm -hmm. Everybody relates to that. They've been in a relationship. I do some stuff about kids and some, you know, getting older. And then things that just, you know, happen and that are new. And then, you know, you stick that in there. So I do admire comics that say, I, I'm working on a whole new hour. So, I mean, I don't, I don't, God do, bless. I know, I think that's amazing. <laughs> I, I'm more like I take something out, I put something in, I right, take it right, out, you right. know, and then you ultimately, rotate. It, you rotate. right, it's a yeah. different set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. but uh, no, I don't, but I'm not, I, again, like I said, I'm not looking to offend right. and, 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 or say a word where everybody's going to be like, oh, right, right. like that's not, but me. is it that's true? Is it true during one of your sets you had mentioned that you worked? For one of the accounting firms that yeah. handles the Academy Awards. Yes, yes, that is correct. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So I have a better shot at going to the Oscars as an accountant than I do as an actress. So it's all work. <laughs> that all was a great line. It's all working it's, out. It's a great line. <laughs> How many more years? Oh my God! It's, All right. oh it's, my a, God. it's a crazy. That this is, is so funny. This is insane. It's a crazy industry. But, and like we chose an yeah, industry we, we love, chose. but it doesn't love you back. Really? No, it's really, sometimes I mean, very abusive. It, it is, isn't it? It's like we we just yeah. It's it's yeah. It's it's like most I, comics are in therapy. I I, <laughs> I uh, or need it. I I say that uh, first of all, if you. You have to want to do this. I mean, like, okay, let's say you start out, you're curious, you go to open mics, you do some bringer shows. That's all great and stuff. But I think when you get to the five-year mark, like yeah. that, that was for me, yeah. you know, where I was like, all right, yeah, I'm either doing this or I'm out because right. it's too hard. It is. And I tell people this all the time. When someone, I get off stage and people are like, oh, my God, I don't know how you get up there and this and that. The stage isn't the hard part. It's the getting the work. Yeah, That's true. the part that takes so, so much true. time. It's getting if, booked, getting booked, if, getting booked. Uh, if, and it's still a very, oh. well, we were talking how, you know, you're doing this 20 years. I started in the early 90s and how it's still a male, it's still a male dominated industry. And there's a lot of, it's hard to get stage time. And it's, you know, you got to, you know, you hustle, you book yourself, you're doing everything yourself. Everything, everything. You know, and you, and, and you, and you drive three hours to do 20 minutes and you get 
couple hundred dollars if you're lucky. <laughs> so, well, it, it's crazy. It is. It is still male dominated. It is. It's better than it was. It is. And I, I, I always like to say this though. Honestly, if it weren't for male comics, I wouldn't have a career. It's true. So no, it's many true. men have hired me. Yes, yes, yes. So gave me chances yeah, yeah, yeah. and went to bat for yeah. me. So I love male comics yeah. because, you know, I wouldn't be sitting here if it weren't for a lot of male comics. It's true. It, it really is true. Um, now, I, I'd like to know go ahead, what? Uh, if, uh, if I'm able to take my shirt off like some male <laughs> comics are doing. I will, I, I'm very curious about, like, if I just did that. Uh, so... But to get, like, I, men, and I would imagine the male comics have to agree with this, too. I mean, their <laughs> scope of things that they're able to do, oh, I think, it's, is it's a, a lot, it's a lot wider, it's a lot wider. A wider of an It net, sure is. You know, so. Absolutely. Ab but that's absolutely. the audience. But that's the audience. That's what they want or that's what they expect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. That's true. It's so true. Um, I also want to talk about... Um, you have your own podcast yes. mm -hmm. that you do once a week. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And it is called Sweet and Salty with Ellen Karras because I am sweet, as you can see. <laughs> I can be very, very sweet. And I can very, be very, very salty. salty. But I was told I can't be salty because it's cable. And well, you can be salty as long as you don't curse. Yeah. You can say frig, yeah. you can say sugar. Yeah. You know, we, we substitute some words here. Um, but you started that, you said how many seasons ago? Nine seasons, like 2015. Wow. Yeah. That's commitment, girl. It yeah. really is. Because yeah. I've been doing this five years and yeah. that is commitment. Yeah. I love it. I love interviewing people. Um, I've been doing, the last six months, I've been doing them solo just uh, just from a time constraint. Right. But I just make sure I put something out there once a week. And you were I doing it out of the comic strip. Yeah, I right? started actually in Brooklyn at a radio station, internet radio station in Brooklyn. Okay. Called B-Box. I did that for quite a while. Yes, yes. And then I moved up to the comic strip, which was great because it was much closer to where I lived. Right. And that was fun. And then COVID had happened. And, uh, but then everybody was doing everything on Zoom. Yes. I was able to do things on Zoom. Did you do any stand-up shows on Zoom? I yourself? did. Oh, it, oh, a lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I did a lot of corporates. Okay. I still do some once in a while. Okay. That was a that was an interesting. It's very interesting. I remember the first one I did was a couple weeks after the lockdown. Yeah. And it was for a family that was out in the Hamptons, and they wanted to have some entertainment. So they hired me. Uh -huh. We started at nine o'clock. It was in the basement of this house that they rented in the Hamptons. <laughs> okay. They just had a what they told me like a Thanksgiving dinner, uh -huh. which was you know turkey and gravy okay. and you know lots of food. Yeah. Um, and by the time we we sat down to do it, and I I, I just. I was trying to feel my way around, like, how do I do this? Do yeah. I look at the camera? Do yeah, I look at yeah, the computer? Yeah. Do I this and that? Yeah. We made a makeshift, you know, sort of stage. My my husband putting sheets up and everything. <laughs> I'd be like, look, so white trash. I mean, it was just like awful. All we needed was like a, an old couch with a rip in it in front of me. It was awful. So, um, uh, and then I'll never forget, and I'm like doing my thing, and yeah. blah blah blah. I've got some jokes about COVID, this and that, and like I'm, and then I'm, I'm trying to look in my laptop yeah. into the camera, yeah. and when I look down, I see like there's a dog walking across. <laughs> the, they, the people have like their bare feet up like this. I'm just like this is oh so disgusting, God. but I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going, and I'm gonna pretend like this is normal, oh which is not. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely an experience oh, I personally God. didn't do any I I chose not to and and did other things but um yeah it was uh it was an experience well I will say people. that after the third time I was on a show it was a fundraiser that was supposed to go on like that May yeah and they decided to do a, a zoom so I was part of a lineup uh -huh. and on that show I found my rhythm and I found what worked. And as a matter of fact, the person who produced the show was like texting me afterwards, like, oh my God, that was so good. Whatever. I go, this is my third one. <laughs> I, I, I think I figured Get it out. Get the hang of it. I think I figured it out. And uh, yeah, so I do them. And I, to tell you the truth, I love them. I mean, that's not what yeah, I, I yeah. want it all to be. Yeah, I know. But uh, yeah, I'd say once a month or so, I'll do all like right. a corporate, usually like a that's corporate. Cool. 
Yeah. And yeah. it's good. And it's fun. And they have fun. And, and you have to know that you're not going to hear laughter. You have to have everybody off mic because it's yes. too distracting. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you don't know. want to hear anyone burp or well, whatever. The, go, the, the bathroom flush. The, the or, doorbell, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the dog, yeah. the whatever. They're fighting yeah, or the yeah. refrigerator, pouring, yeah. you know, whatever. And then, um, and then, like, let's just say you have, you know, 70 people. I mean, I'm only going to be able to see who I'm able to see. Right, and right. And try to do a little crowd work. But, but I, I, I don't mind doing them. But, again, as a supplement, not as, like, you know, like the real thing. <laughs> hey, listen, yeah. we're going to take my next break. Please stay there. Don't go away. We'll be back after this. Wonder Woman was everything to little girls, especially that look like me. She stands for being a voice for people that need a voice. My organization renovates homes for people with disabilities. And when I come home, a self-care routine makes me feel my best. I'm very proud of the difference that we're making. And to see that impact in my community inspires me to work even harder for everyone around me. Hi, I'm Georgia Rose, founder of Zencuda. You can watch me on the Soul Space podcast every Friday at noon on Channel 20 for spiritual guidance. And as you all know, um, that is how I first opened into my own psychic gifts was through the angelic realm, astrology. And so we've got Mars and the Sun together in Scorpio, which creates a lot of combustion in the astrological world. We call that a Kazimi and tarot. With the Four of Cups right side up, it means we have a lot of choices to make and we're not looking at what's really being divinely given to us. We're too busy in the busyness of the choices to really see the divine intervention, the divine timing, and the divine guidance. We're the place. Watch the Soul Space Podcast. Teresa Farrell. And who's the best actress you know? Teresa Farrell. And who's the best cast member in Bad Boy? Teresa Farrell. Who's got the best radio? Teresa Farrell. Stop. Who's your favorite Jimmy? Teresa Farrell. Who are you loving right now? Teresa, <laughs> Teresa Farrell. All right, so I love you too, baby. Love you as always. No, How you doing? It's Sal the Voice Valentinetti. Why are you watching me? You should be watching Teresa Catus Tracy. Tea time with Teresa Canis, Tracy Farrell. And make sure you, you, you follow Teresa on Facebook. Tea time with Teresa Canis, Tracy Farrell. We'll see you there. I love the way you say my name. I love... America's got talent. Oh. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Hey, Doc Gooden. Congratulations to Doc. They retired his number. He was at City Field on... Uh, was it Sunday? Sunday. I know a couple of my friends were there, so congratulations, Doc. Had him on the show virtually, hoping to get him in that chair uh, one day if someone goes to pick him up for me. <laughs> so congratulations, Doc. I love you, my friend. Um, I'm with, um, hello, Ellen Karras, 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 and she's an actor, she's a producer, she's a writer, and hello, stand-up comedian and author. Thank you. Author, tell me about this book. It says special people, godparents in the Orthodox Christian faith. Because, you know, godparents are so important in your faith mm -hmm. as well as yes. uh, Catholic Italians. Yes. We, godparents are like, you know. Yes. I'm a, actually, I'm a godmother. Yeah. So it's so important to me. I'm a godmother nine times because, well, apparently I was always available. <laughs> uh, so I'm very proud of this book because, like I said, I'm a Sunday school teacher as well. Yes. And um, for the first bunch of years, I had the little kids. Yeah. And I wanted to teach them uh, some of the Greek traditions as well. And I wanted to talk about godparents. And, you know, well, we're all baptized. Christians are baptized. Correct. And, yes. You know, and, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and John the Baptist and all that. Um, and then I want to get into, you know, fast forward, you know, we're all baptized because Christ was baptized. Right. So I couldn't find a book. I couldn't find anything online. Really? I couldn't find anything. So I was like, I'm going to write a book. I've never written a children's book before. Huh. I, I, I don't work, other than Sunday school, it's not like I was a teacher. <laughs> so, right. Um, I, I had the idea for the text, and I wrote that. And then uh, I kind of 
put it aside, and then a few years later, I'm like, I gotta finish this. Right. And I've got a lot of projects like that. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and then uh, I found an illustrator, uh -huh. and I worked with her, and right. then I. You know, I found out that in children's books, the pictures have to match the words. So, you know, that was a little well, education. Coordinate a little bit. But yeah. uh, it's a really beautiful book, and it's about the relationship of uh, God parents with their uh, God children. Uh -huh. um, it, I say Orthodox Christian faith because it goes through some of the, the things that we do in our faith and the baptism and the right, chrismation. Right. Um, so I'll just give you just one little sort of fact. But yeah. in your religion, you have your first communion when you're like six or seven. Right. And then you have your confirmation when you're about 12, 13. Right. In our religion, we get baptized, we get confirmed, and we have our first communion when we're baptized. Okay. Yeah, so 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 anyway, so I go through all of that, and right. then the relationship uh, that you, you have with them and the responsibility of the godparent. Yeah. And another reason why I wrote this is because my godmother, my aunt, who took me to my first play right and I, I love very much uh, she was a huge inspiration to me and so this was dedicated to oh, her and nice. an homage to her yeah. and she was a school librarian so she's all about books yeah so it had a lot of meaning meaning to that's, it that's it's a, sweet it's available on Amazon I mean yeah. even if you're not Orthodox Christian right if you're Christian I mean yeah, yeah, I don't know yeah. if you're not Christian and you want to teach but your kids about nice to learn other about religions, other religions yeah, is, it's right, true right. as well and I mean, I it's also, not heavy duty yeah um, no no uh, it's a sweet book and like I said I I, I really love the illustrations the 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 illustrator did a great job, yeah. but I will tell you, it took five years. I was just going to ask you how long it took you to do that. I can't, and, and not a money maker. It's a, la it's a labor of love. Right. Not a money maker, so if you do yeah, that, then a, don't, a, don't do that. But, it's a labor but, of love. But, uh, but no, right, it's a labor of love. I sell them after shows. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, it's a part of my brand. It's nice, it's good, but yeah. I, you can find her, Ellen, on um, uh, Instagram as Greek Chick Comic, okay? Also, um, Ellen Karras on Facebook. And you can go to her website, www.ellencarris.com, and there is everything. There's her bio, there's pics, there's um, upcoming shows, if you want to see her, because she travels. She's She came back from Florida, and you, you travel all over. I was in Florida three times in the last three months. Yeah, so, so yeah. you know, you're all over the place. Yeah. We have some pics, actually, that I want to put up mm -hmm. um, with you with some celebrities, because yeah. I love me some celebrities. So uh, there's you and Marlo Thomas. So I have to Keep tell that up, you, thank you. I was excited to meet her because when I was a little girl, people said I looked like Marlo Thomas. I, I could like see that, it. Like I could, that girl. I could see yeah, it. Yeah, so I when I met her, I was like, ah! <laughs> so sweet. Yeah, she's a nice lady. Uh, from ch um, Cheers. Cheers, yes. Norm, yes, right? Yes, Norm. Yeah. Yes. Please don't. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't remember his John name. John Ratzenberger. Thank you. Yeah. Now, this one. Hold yeah. that there. Yeah. I love Olympia Dukakis. Yeah. I love her. I just watched Moonstruck coming home on the plane from my parents. Freaking love her. Tell me how this happened. Wait, Moons. I've seen it about a bazillion oh, times. Oh, I know. I've, I've seen it a million times, but I actually wanted to yeah. watch it on the plane yeah. coming yeah. home from Florida. Yeah. But uh, it was at an event. Yeah. And uh, actually, I'll tell you, I, that was pick, the second though. time I met her. Really? The, fir I'm sorry, the first you. time I met her was uh, in, in my beginnings of doing Greek American comedy, that PR woman that I told you about. Yes. Her name was Ona. Yeah. She arranged it. There was an opening of a restaurant, a Greek restaurant downtown. Okay. But there, we, we get to the restaurant, there was like nothing there. There were no tables, no nothing. She invited Olympia, who lived like in the West Village or something. Okay. And uh, so I opened up and I did like 10 minutes of stand up. There's Olympia, okay, oh, wow. the big movie star, Oscar winner. She's the woman sitting on a crate with her husband, Louis, who was in Mad About You. Yes. Louis yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, Zorch, I think, or something. Mm -hmm. I forgot his last name. He, him, I, I wound up chatting with him, too, for a while. They were very nice. She was laughing. She was Aww. very sweet. I gave her, later on, that I think I gave her my DVD <laughs> at, like, that event. And she was amazing. She was a real actor's actor. Yeah, she passed away not that long ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah she was she's great. She's mm -hmm. What we have yeah. after that? Oh, oh, you and Drew. I opened up for him. Uh, well, few... you've worked with Drew. You worked yeah. with 
S did you work with the Sebastian? I did. I you opened up Sebastian for, uh, I, I, I don't have a photo. I don't have a photo. No with photo it. of yeah, that. No but, photo. Sorry. Um, and yeah. and and wait. And who else? Jimmy Walker and JJ. Yeah. J yes. Yeah. I think actually I didn't give you that photo. That's but okay. yeah, Duke Harry was so nice. Yes. He watched all my sets. He laughed. He, he was great. He was and he's very very funny and he does like 25 minutes on the Price is Right, which is hysterical. Wow. He now was, skip skip guy. the next one. Go to the one under that. Thank you. That is you and, um, hello. That's my girl, um, Kelly Ripa. Yes, yeah. Kelly. Yes. And, uh, again, brain fart, uh, Kelly Ripa. She, 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 I heard she's a doll. Yeah, well, we're friends. Yes. So we're like real friends. Well, you, yeah. well, that's cool to know. Yeah. Yeah. But you, I, I just want to, before you show the picture before that, you, I give back. Um, you give back. You're involved in um, uh, uh, ovarian cancer yes. research. Yes. Um, and you also do the... Um, the Operation Warrior Wellness. Yes, yeah. the, for the yeah. uh, meditation for yeah. veterans with yes. uh, PT, uh, PTSD. PTSD. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and then the pick before that is you and um, Bashemi. Um, yes. At one of the, yes. te te they call it Teal. Teal, tell every amazing lady about yes. ovarian cancer. Yes. I am yes. see their walk every year for the last 13 years wow. in Prospect Park, Brooklyn. Uh, yeah. We did virtual during COVID. There were two years they didn't do it. And then last year we came back. And as a matter of fact, Stacey Sager, who's on Eyewitness News. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Her and I co host yes. that. Yes. So Steve came with his wife a few years ago. She nice. passed away of ovarian cancer, Joe, jo, which was yeah. very sweet. Yeah. Um, so he's men of teal. But I know but, these, yeah. are, these are two, you know, two things that you're very I think close it's to important that you. Especially as performers, um, and, and most people do do that, right? They they have some yeah, kind of cause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you should pick a few things where you want to give back. Um, I love teal. When I is love, teal done, by the way? When is that walk done? It's uh, in so the second Saturday. It's, it's the Saturday after Labor Day in September. Okay. It's always that that whatever that following Saturday is. So I think it's going to be the seventh because I think Labor Day is like the first. And okay. um, Operation Warrior Wellness. Uh, I learned how to do transcendental meditation a while ago. Okay. Uh, the man that runs actually that uh, is a name, a guy by the name of Ed Schloman. He's amazing. He's a, a Vietnam vet. He's all about meditation and helping the vets. Look, I am very blunt. I back the blue. Yes. Um, yes. A, a huge supporter of the cops. Yes. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Right. 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 Um, no. Uh, veterans. I, I. 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 It just blows my mind that we do not help our veterans and we're letting all these people Absolutely. in the country first and we're prioritizing them as opposed to people that fought for our freedom. I'm going to stop there because then I'll go nuts. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyway, I, I'm I, I very, it's very close to me. My father was a Marine. I had My military, dad was in the Navy. The military Uncles, family. Yeah, right. Army. Um, it's, now, it's very you, did you meet, originally meet Kelly through the ovarian cancer? No, no. I met, I, I, no, I, I met her, uh, I kind of met her through somebody. Okay. Then I went to the show a few times, and th then I started working out where she works out. Oh, okay. And then we were just <laughs> okay. we there. She's, and by the way, she is uh, so lovely yeah. and so sweet. What you see is what you get. She's a very hard worker. She She's is. She's had a, a great she career is. in daytime te television. Absolutely. She's very talented. She's very funny. Another hard working she, woman. She wrote a book. She's very hard work. She makes it look easy. Yes. That's the trick. But she's a mom. That is the trick. Three, she's got three great kids. The kids, they're like young adults yeah, now. Yeah, they're her all and Mark grown. are very solid. She's, yeah. I love her. I'm There's glad her and Mark are together on the show oh, now, yeah. to tell you the truth. I tell you the truth. He's, I've been wanting him on that show with her for a long time. He's great. He's just, it was like nothing. There yeah. was no transition. Yeah. I, he, had, he did co-host a lot, you yeah. know, and yeah. obviously Filled the men. In. But yeah. he's really good at it. He's very funny. He's also very smart. You he can tell. Is. He's very, very quick. Yeah. Quick, quick witted, which mm -hmm. is great. Well, listen, we have like two minutes left. This went so fast. Is there anything that I didn't cover that maybe you want to mention? I mean, I know you mentioned uh, sweet and salty. Mm -hmm. You did some, something else called Karis Clips. Uh, yeah, that, yeah. That I just was just, just some something. Fun, yeah. yeah, just some fun things. I mean, look, I'm trying to write again, a play. being yeah, reasonable yeah, yeah, with yes. with you. By the way, with you. I mean, you had you. Oh, yeah. that was yeah. 
you know, so. That was, uh, by the way, I'm Ellen Karras. That was my stand-up comedy DVD. Yes. Being Reasonable with Ellen Karras. What, what, what year did you do that A one? podcast that I used to do. 2016. Okay. Yeah, so I don't know. It where, is, was that, where was that filmed? Broadway Comedy Club. It's okay. probably time to do another comedy special, but. It is, it is. But I'm trying to write a play about my great-grandmother. Oh, great. So, again, another unfinished project. Here you go. Another, another unfinished oh, project. there you are there on you stage. At, Thank you. At my best. <laughs> uh, and I did a documentary. You talked about Al Martin. Yes. I have this documentary documentary that I have to put out there. I interviewed people during COVID. Al was one of them. He did an oh, amazing interview. So yeah. I, that's another thing I have to put out there. And uh, So you got I'm some things trying to write also my own book, which Kelly was like, do it. I'll read it for you. Oh, I just did a book. Oh, so I got to get that you know, choppy, choppy. Yeah, definitely. But I'm too busy doing my spreadsheet to see how much money <laughs> I don't make in stand-up comedy. That's what I'm obsessed <laughs> with. Oh my God, listen to me. I want to thank you so much for taking the trip to uh, Long Island. That's a pick up. I appreciate it. Of course, we hit the diner. We yes. hit the diner I love before it. the show. Cool. Um, thank you again for coming out. Thank I appreciate you for it. My me. door's always open to you. Thank I want to you. thank everyone for watching Tea Time, supporting me, my show. Um, tune in every Monday, 8 o'clock, right here. Uh, remember, everybody, tell everyone you love you love them. And I'll see you next week. Ciao.